Hi everybody, my name is Scott Walls. For over 25 years, I've deployed ERP applications for some of the world's largest organizations. During that time, I've taught thousands of people just like you how to discover, use, deploy, and support Oracle's back office applications. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the major hardware and software components involved in tenancy, explain popular approaches to tenancy using an analogy, and explain how each approach shares or does not share in the maintenance of common components. This discussion also generalizes each vendor as they tend to have some uniqueness in their approach to tenancy in the cloud. But one point is more important than all others. Getting to the cloud per se is not the goal. The goal is to leverage the capabilities of the cloud or any other architectural design so as to increase productivity of an enterprise while simultaneously decreasing its overall cost. Please note that this lesson is part of the Oracle Cloud Explore course. But before we get started, did you know that you could earn free badges for display on your LinkedIn profile? You can. Stay until the end of this video and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's get started. Key topics for this lesson are as follows. What is tenancy? Tenancy, or rather technology components. The real estate analogy. Evaluating multi-tenancy. Evaluating single tenancy hosted. Evaluating single tenancy private cloud. And finally, virtual private cloud or VPC. Topic one, what is tenancy? The extent to which application technology components are or are not shared among unrelated users of those components. Topic number two, technology components. So let's walk through the listing of components. Technology or rather tenancy is all about the sharing of resources. So those resources are a web server creates sessions for users and manages the flow of data. Application server manages calls to the application code. Database server manages calls to the data. So real quickly, before we move forward, let's put together a quick, easy example. If you're gonna log in and go to Facebook, for example, you go to a paid web page and you put in your username and password. That session is managed by the web server. When you click the button, the application server makes calls to the application code and understands which of those values to send back to the database server to validate your account. Number four, development platform. So that's an integrated set of development and integration tools. This is key and it's particularly key to a multi-tenancy Workday conversation because Workday does not have this development platform. Third party application store. So this is a catalog of applications that can be deployed and connected to a user, excuse me, to a customer's application. So certain vendors do not have it, let's say Workday. Certain other vendors do have it, but some Salesforce are better than others, Oracle. Six, infrastructure. So bail, bare metal servers, which can be used a variety of purposes, dock storage, application storage, networking storage, compute. All right, so you have a lot of vendors here, uh, particularly let's say Amazon, Azure, these types. And then lastly, messaging and interfacing tools. So these are the APIs between third-party apps. Just kind of broke this out because Workday does allow you Workday Studio, so there's some level of connectivity. There just isn't a development platform. Okay, so next up, we're gonna talk through a real estate analogy to try to explain three of the major versions or approaches to tenancy. First up, multi-tenancy. So this is kind of analogous to leasing a condo. The leasee, so software licensee, pays a monthly usage fee, owns nothing, maintains nothing, but has the right to use all the common components. So this is great. There are some concerns with commingling data, code, setups, reports, hardware, etc. Also, the licensee is limited to what is provided by their software vendor. So again, back to this idea of Workday. If Workday doesn't provide you a development platform, you do not have one in a single connected ecosystem, if you will. Next up, single tenancy hosted. This is really a legacy construct, but it's analogous to owning a mobile home and leasing space in a mobile home park. Essentially, the leasee or licensee gets the use of the infrastructure, but nothing else. So basically boxes in the sky. The applications, the server, 
the customized code are still maintained by the licensee. So again, why I say legacy. So this is common to on-premise legacy applications. So it is likely that there are customizations and then that means auto updating is not a reality. So this will continue to require expensive upgrades. This really is a small incremental improvement over simply having the boxes on premise. And then lastly, single tenancy private cloud. So this is anal analogous to leasing a home. The licensee pays a usage fee, owns nothing, but maintains nothing, but has the right to use all the common components. However, in a private cloud approach like Oracle Cloud, the data, code, customizations, reports, and hardware are not commingled. So there's some risk that you have in multi-tenancy that you do not have in VPC, virtual private cloud. In other words, you get all the shared maintenance, but you do not have the risk of being on a box in an application or connected to a development environment with other parties. Clearly the best option from a cost versus security. Now, it would be fair to say, sometimes the box can be shared. You'll see an example at the end, but you can either also have your own box or even have what they call cloud at customer where it's your box, not Oracle's your box. Okay, so now we want to evaluate multi-tenancy. You can see by the image on the right, you have several different tenants going to the same code set box, etc. So let's take a look at common elements and then take a look at where they're shared. And shared is good because share means low maintenance or no maintenance, um, but it may have, in the case of multi-tenancy, some level of risk. So the web server, the app server, the database server are shared. Messaging is shared. But when you get to development platform, app store infrastructure, these are not shared. Next up, evaluating single tenancy legacy hosted. And so here you can see not a lot of advantage and that's kind of what we saw in the mobile home <clears throat> analogy. So the web server, the app server, the database server, development platform, messaging all not shared. You may have one, but it's on yours must be maintained and updated and upgraded by you at your expense being the enterprise. App store non-existent. Infrastructure is shared. The infrastructure is the hosting. Evaluating single tenancy private cloud. So once again, you see the imagery there on the left, excuse me, right. And then we'll take a look at the common components. So here your web server shared but it's maintained by, in this case, let's use the example of Oracle. You have a web server, but you don't have to maintain it. You have an app server, great, not shared. Well, shared in terms of maintenance, not shared in terms of commingling. Same with the database server, same with the devs, the development platform, app store is shared. Infrastructure may or may not be shared, right? So we talked a little bit just a second ago about how we could have our own box or we could have a shared box. And again, the next slide will give you a little bit more of a visual. And then messaging is also shared. So you can start to see the advantages of single tenancy when it is private cloud. You're really all sharing the same code. The same code set is provisioned into different virtual private clouds and maintained. So speaking of that, let's go to our last slide, virtual private cloud or VPC. And so you see one of the more shared instances. I always think of this like VMware. So you take a box and you cut it up into different slices, VPC1, VPC2, VPC3, VPC4, right? And then each of these different VPC, in this case, let's look at 15, is kind of its own computer within a computer, a virtual computer, if you will. And you can see how your address, if you're in Fusion today, will explain a little bit of that to you. Box first, ABC1, uh, and then VPC is your virtual private cloud on the box. And what happens is Oracle, based on what you license, will provision development environment, provision EPM or Hyperion or reporting, or provision software as a service fusion Oracle cloud applications into your virtual private cloud. So you really can control what your security level is if you wish to. And then of course, like I said a few slides ago, you may not want to use Oracle's box there are certain large banks that don't. And so then they use their own box. So that's a little bit of the virtual private cloud. Okay, you should now understand software tenancy, the components of tenancy, single tenancy versus multi-tenancy hosted, 
the real estate analogy and what a virtual private cloud is. If you don't, no problem, watch again, it's free. If you do, congratulations, you're ready for the next lesson in this course. So that's the end of this presentation, but hopefully not the end of your learning journey. There are thousands of free videos just like this one. Remember, better content, better skills, better income, better life. We want to help you get 1% better every day. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Okay, as promised, here are the five steps you can perform today to start earning free badges for your LinkedIn profile. Step one, navigate to panamir.com and either sign in or join now. It's free. Step two, in the upper left, under the Discover menu, select the course that you want to watch and get badged for. Step three, watch all of the different video lessons in that course. Step four, when it's complete, send your LinkedIn profile and the course you watched and your user ID to badges at panamir.com. And then sit back and wait for step five when we attach a badge to your LinkedIn profile.